Now, the problem with today, there are a few. Although that Ghana thing was good. <laughs> One must celebrate each day something awesome. You know. We as Anishinaabeg and most indigenous peoples, and you at some point came from an indigenous people before you got all colonized and into industrial society. You came from some land and some place. It is in your genetics. But we live in a society which today, instead of having a cyclical worldview where we recognize things like we are all related, or where we recognize that the Creator's law, Gichi Dabwewen, is the highest law, higher than the laws made by nation states or municipalities. That we recognize that durable societies and sustainable societies are based on cyclical thinking. We live in a linear society. The Hopis have this prophecy. I got this slide on that. Oh, there, look at that, the Hopi prophecy slide. This here, I seen it a long time ago. Thomas Benyaka was a good friend of my father's. And he presented it in kind of a simplistic form. I think he thought I was more simple. But this slide here talks about the linear society within which America lives. And in this worldview, what there is an understanding of is that instead of looking both long term, a lot of times, this country it accelerates its speed even. There's no intergenerational thinking, really. Like for the seventh generation from now, they're looking at the corporate quarterly profit marks. That's kind of short term in my estimation. And we are of a society which is based on the precept of both the idea of progress but somehow technology will save us, that America is smarter. And what you end up with is this linear worldview. I'm going to give you two perfect examples of what a linear worldview looks like, two of our biggest industries in this country. One industry that is an example of a linear economy is waste production, waste management, garbage. We produce about 50 trillion pounds a year, not including wastewater, which I cannot conceptualize. And we don't know what to do with it, right? It's a growth industry. If you are a rural community, bid for a waste dump. You are perpetually employed. That is a linear worldview. It is exemplified also by our lack of thinking about many things where we don't know what we are doing with them yet. Whether it is GMO or nuclear waste, no plan. The perception that somehow a solution will be in the future. No idea what we are doing. And then we have the social production of waste in this society. The linear worldview of society. What is the social production of waste? That is the prison industrial complex. <laughs> Where of the 9 million prisoners in the world today, what? What do we got? 2.1 million, right? And rising in the United States. Largest prison population per capita on a worldwide scale. That is a linear worldview the social production of waste and garbage. And that is not durable. That's not a long-term plan. But if you are a rural community right now and you want long-term economic stability, be a garbage dump or host a prison. You know? And there is something that is very wrong, very wrong about that. So where did that get us? It hasn't done a lot for us, and it will not over the long term. In my community, I'm doing my best to deal with some of the major crises that we face. I'm not going to lecture you on climate change. I'm going to make a leap of faith that you guys realize that we have raised the temperature one degree, we're on our way to two, and it would be a really good thing if we could stop that stuff. 
okay? That means you got to stop coal. It means you got to stop some other stuff too, but you got to stop coal. So we work on this issue of climate change. I just bought my kids a globe. And uh, my little morbid thing is, I'm picking islands that are disappearing. See if you can find them before they disappear, guys. That's what's going on. You know, I just left, came back from the Pacific, and they are going under. But we sit over here in our little bubble, think, well, maybe someone will save us. There will be some carbon reduction ferry. That's not actually true. That carbon reduction ferry lives with the tooth fairy. And when you are about nine, you should realize that neither of them is here. The other issues I deal with are peak oil, which I have one cool slide on. You all know what peak oil is, right? I had to get counseling for my 18, 19-year-old son. I had to explain to my kid that before the kid could even drive, I had consumed half of the world's known oil resources. He has been in counseling for several years. <laughs> He's doing pretty good, though. I bought the kid a Mercedes that some hippies souped up out in Berkeley, and it runs on grease. And uh, that's a good thing, that grease. There, there seems to be plenty in America, so he's OK. <laughs> but the problem with this peak oil, I got the mother slides if you guys want to show, is that when you consume half the world's, world's known oil resources, you end up where we are today, which is you go after oil that should be left someplace, tar sands of Alberta, mining an ID area the size of Lake Superior to basically shove it's kind of like clay-like sand into American gas tanks in destroying the entire north. Boreal forests, Athabascan watersheds, entire region. And where's that oil all going? Right here. I understand that 80% of the gas that is consumed in Minnesota is now coming from the tar sands. That is wrong. We should not destroy something for that. And then you got to the south. That's the next slide. You don't need me to tell you too much about that one. Oh, that's still the tar sands. That's what it looks like when they're done with the processing of the waste water. <laughs> that's not looking good. And this is to the south. So we are a country that, you know, we are basically a big junkie. Largest energy economy in the world, no plan. Addicted to oil with the reality that when you are addicted at this level, you pretty much become a junkie. And what junkies do is they do a lot of bad shit and hang out with dealers. And that's America. It turns out that the remaining oil is in places like 20,000 feet under the sea, in the Arctic ice caps, up there in Alberta, at the bottom of the sea in China, or could be in some country that may not want to give us their oil. Right? $100 billion a year on the war right now. Cannot afford another war for oil. So we need to have a plan B.